Hey guys, James from FTR Outdoors. We got Shauna manning the camera. We're manning the camera. We got Steven over there digging into some beef jerky around the campfire. As you can see, we are out on another camp trip. We've been back to back to back to back camping all summer. Uh, video posting has been up and down, sorry about that, but we've also just been enjoying our time outdoors, as you guys should be doing too. Um, so today we're going to be adding another video into the Tacoma Overland segment, um, and what we're going to be doing is going over our air compressor, why we chose the air compressor, why we bought the air compressor, um, and just kind of going over the pros and cons of it the air up air down time kind of deal but we'll get more into that as we get to it um, in the last video that we posted or one of the last videos that we did in the Tacoma segment we talked about our recovery gear one of the things we touched on was the air compressor um, it's a pretty big piece of kit it's a relatively expensive piece of kit um, but we think it's necessary um, before we go on uh, to the air compressor itself we're gonna do a quick little uh, shameless plug for us. Uh, it's the end of August. We got highs of uh, eight, nine, 10 degrees Celsius coming up on this trip. Tons of rain, it's gonna be wet. It's gonna be kind of gross outside. So temperatures are cooling off. Uh, so we wanted to kind of show you some stuff that we've been uh, doing, had on the go, that kind of stuff, and our recommendations for um, outerwear, uh, that kind of stuff. So what you can see I'm wearing here, I'm wearing the uh, what's called the Indigo Glory Days Crew Neck Sweatshirt. It's made by Brave Star Salvage. It's a great sweatshirt. Uh, it works really good in these kind of shoulder season temperatures, which we're always finding ourselves camping in. Um, basic shirt. It's made in the USA. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, it's going to get real cold here in the evening time, and this might not be enough. So what we're going to do is uh, grab... This nice little uh, made by Devin FTR Outdoors Stay Warm Series sweatshirt. Uh, it's a super solid piece that Devin's been working on. He's also been working on t-shirts, hats, all that kind of jazz. Um, so when it gets nice and cold out, we can just layer up with these new sweatshirts. We'll show you some B-roll clips of these as uh, you know as the video goes on. I'll, I'll cut to some clips in the video. Um, but yeah, we got a nice kind of fleece Sherpa lined sweatshirt. It's got thumb holes if you want to keep your hands warm, some sweet logos, stuff like that. So we know some of you guys out there have been asking about wearables as you've seen us wearing t-shirts, you've seen us wearing hats. We haven't really gotten into the full on selling of the wearables, but if you guys are interested, let us know and we'll shoot you pricing and info and stuff like that. Devin is the guy responsible for doing all the wearable stuff, so he'll be the one to contact. But just message us or leave a comment in the video, we'll be sure to get back to you. Alright, so as you can see, I took my FTR Stay Warm hoodie off um, as it's really warm and I'm wearing a sweater, so I don't want to sweat my balls off for the duration of this video. Um, so I'm going to stick with the uh, Glory Days Indigo Crew Neck. Um, like I said, it's a Brave Star piece of kit. If you watch back to three or four videos ago, we did a video piece for Brave Star Salvage. Go check that out, give it a thumbs up, like the channel, follow, subscribe. But like I said, today we're gonna to be going over our air compressor. So I'll, I'll go over the compressor that we chose. First off, the name. I went with the Smitty Built 2781 5.65 CFM compressor. There's a bunch of compressors out there from a bunch of popular brands. This is more of an inexpensive entry level compressor, but review wise and actual in field usage wise, it tends to compete or do as well as a lot of the other ones. I went with this because it's portable. I can kind of store it wherever I need to store it. I don't have to have it always mounted in my truck so I can give it to Shauna, I can give it to Steven, I can give it to Kieran, Devin, whoever might need it. And that's a really nice feature. Uh, having a portable air compressor that can actually inflate tires, uh, unlike the cheaper 12 volt ones, they might overheat, it's kind of nice. Now it is heavy, it is big, it is bulky. That's kind of one of the downsides, but it's a heavy duty compressor. So you kind of, you know, weigh your pros and cons. That's kind of a con, but the pros outweigh the cons in my mind. We'll show you what comes with the kit. Um, right here, we have basically what threads on into the valve stem. You've got a tire pressure gauge. 
The tire pressure gauge is kind of a con. It's cheap plastic, it's not really tough, so kind of be careful with it. And it goes up in increments of five PSI. I, I would have liked to have seen like one PSI increments so you can get a more exact readout on it. But for the most part, it does the job. I would just recommend checking your PSI with a more accurate gauge after inflating with this. Um, then it comes with your gator clamps. So this is just gonna connect to the positive and negative lead of your battery. Uh, pretty straightforward, not much to say about it. These are permanently affixed to the actual compressor itself. Um, this little plastic cover kind of slid back on me, but it's like a standard gator clamp. It then comes with a nice long hose, so your, your classic high pressure air compressor hose. If you guys have used portable air compressors for like let's say pneumatic tools, stuff like that, this is the standard stuff that it comes with. It seems to be pretty high quality uh, for the price that we paid for it, so I, I'm pretty happy with it so far. It's also long enough so that I can leave my compressor uh, by the hood of the truck and I can just run the hose to all four tires. I don't have to move the compressor continuously. And then the piece de la resistance, the compressor itself. So as you can see, it's a very big unit. It's a big, heavy compressor, but because it is big and heavy, it can handle airing up you know, four tires. My tires are just 31 inches, as you guys uh, would know if you've been watching the channel, but you could probably air up to 35 inch tires with this guy without it getting too hot, uh, overheating and essentially dying. On the compressor, you've got nice rubber feet, so the vibration is very limited. It stays nice and still. You don't have to worry about all that noise and jazz. It's got a basic on-off switch here, and then a relief valve here. That's basically it. Super simple. Um, what we paid for it, I'm just gonna put it down here. So we paid, or I paid, $265 Canadian for this guy. Um, it's very inexpensive in comparison to, let's say, the ARB twin air compressor. That's an onboard air compressor. It's got dual chambers, and I believe it's actually got a um, reservoir to, to hold air. Um, so you can output a lot more air without putting as much strain on the actual unit itself. Um, that's running you anywhere from 800 to 1,000 Canadian, so this is a quarter of the cost. So in my mind, the cost is a huge positive because this is gonna do basically the same that the ARB is gonna do. Maybe a little bit slower, but in our testing, it, it does pretty well. Um, one downfall with the actual compressor is the, the kit itself, the bag. This is cheap, chintzy, crappy material. Um, I've got tearing in it already. I've only used the compressor two or three times. Um, so that's kind of a bummer, but you only paid 265 for this. So 265 versus a thousand bucks. Yeah, I don't expect to really get a, a super high quality case. Um, another positive uh, is going to be the actual time it takes to air up your tire. So in my experience, going from 20 PSI on a 31 inch tire to 32 PSI, you're looking at about 90 seconds. Um, that's really quick in my mind. If you want quicker, you can fork out more money, but for the price, that's that's pretty solid. So you're looking at maybe eight minutes, um, tops, 10 minutes to, to air up all four tires. So in my mind, that's, that's really awesome. If you're in a rush and you wanna air up faster and you're willing to spend more money, by all means, go do it. But uh, my advice to you is to, to be patient. Um, there's no sense forking out four times the cost for an air compressor that does the same thing for two minutes of time saving. I would say just relax, <laughs> go slow. You're not in a rush, you shouldn't be in a rush anyways. Um, that's how you make mistakes and do things wrong. Um, the other pros for this thing um, is it is, although big and heavy, it does actually pack down relatively well and you can get it into most storage containers, spaces, bins, that kind of stuff. It fits nice in our in our drawer system just off to the side. Just happened to work out. And then I'll, I'll say the last like negative about it. It's kind of a positive and a negative. Um, it gets hot, but it doesn't get hot where you'd think it would get hot. 
So this little hose fitting here, it, it gets quite hot to the touch after doing four tires. Mind you, when we did that testing, it was like 35 degrees, and I, I, I fully expect any piece of equipment that's putting out that much energy to get warm. As for the actual motor itself, uh, in this region and in this region, didn't really get hot at all, and the actual air tank itself didn't get hot. It was just kind of the hoses and the fittings. So that was a little confusing, but there's a lot of energy passing through there in hot temperatures, so I would expect it to, to be hot. That's kind of a pro and a con. Uh, you just have to let it cool down before you put it away, and be careful not to touch here and accidentally burn your fingers. To use it, it's actually very simple. We'll go over that. What I'll do is I'm gonna air down one of my tires. Uh, I'm just gonna go down 10 PSI. Um, and then we'll go over the steps to inflate it and we'll do a quick timing to show you how quick it actually airs up the tire. So we'll cut to a tire and uh, go from there. All right, so now we're gonna go over how this actually works. Um, so we'll put it together first. What I've got here is the hose as mentioned before. These are, I believe, the Japanese fittings. So if you guys ever damage these, or if you're not fond of the Japanese style of fitting, you can cut this and replace it with a, a North American style fitting. Um, but they're a little different than your standard fitting that you might be used to. So it just clips on like any air compressor fitting or any pneumatic tool fitting. That goes there, and you can run your hose out. And then here's your main line from the compressor, and the other end of your air hose or your pneumatic hose you can just put it in and then it's easy done um, simple as that so there's the unit now what you do with this now before I would recommend putting this onto the actual valve stem what we'll do is we'll test it make sure it's running air I've taken the liberty of already dropping the PSI of this tire to about 20 PSI and we're gonna air up to 30 to 31 PSI so give or take 10 PSI um, and we're going to time it. We'll, we'll, we'll let you guys know how long it takes real world. Um, I'm not going to have like a timer on the screen. I'm just going to show you the start time on my watch. Or I'll, I'll read it out and then I'll read out the finish time. Um, because this is kind of a review and not like a time sensitive thing. I just want to show you guys that it is as quick as I, I said it was. Um, so I'm going to wager about 90 seconds to 2 minutes tops. Um, I could be wrong, but that's kind of uh, the experience that I've had so far. One thing to note um, when running this compressor is it does have a pretty big draw in amperage and voltage on your battery, so it's you run the run the engine of the truck. Um, that's something you definitely want to do. You could air up and air down. I'm sure air up with this thing. I'm sure um, without running the the engine of the truck, but it's going to strain your battery. Um, so we'll look up here. You got your gator clamps. It's just like boosting a car or whatever. Um, you can put your positive on wherever. Um, you can just put it on this little bolt here. And then you can put your negative on. One of the downfalls I'd say with this is actually um, the gators themselves. They're kind of small. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, I would have appreciated just a little bit bigger gator clamp so I, so I could actually clip it right over the entire battery housing, um, the, the actual lead connections. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna start it up and then I'll be right back. All right, sorry about the noise, but it's gonna be noisy. So take this, get your on off switch and just turn it on. going to do is I'm going to turn it on the valve stamp and then we're going to time how long it's going to take us to air up to about 30 psi maybe 31 so 10 or 11 psi up so how simple is that um, gauge is reading about 20 psi on here and you can air down with a little button on the back here if you want to or reset your gauge so what we're going to do is I'm going to bring this over and we're going to 
time this. So on my watch, we won't be able to see it on the camera, I'm sorry guys, um, because I'm using a wide angle lens, it's just not gonna work that great. But at uh, 2022 on the dot, we're gonna turn this on. Three, two, one. So, we're at 2023-22. So we stopped it at about 2023-20. So that gives us 80 seconds and we went up 12 PSI. So what I'm gonna do now, just to confirm that, is I'm going to unscrew this uh, from the valve stem. I've got my manual gauge here. And we're gonna check. I actually went quite a bit higher, I'm at 35 PSI. So when I mention that this is a downfall, this gauge, it's not that accurate because it goes up in five PSI increments. So I'm at 35 PSI. So we actually went up 15 PSI um, in 80 seconds. So that's 30% or 50% quicker almost than what I expected because the plan was to go uh, 90 seconds for 10 PSI. So I'm gonna shut the truck off, get this PSI correct, and we'll finish up the video. Alrighty guys, so that wraps up the, uh, I guess, not quite a review, but recommendation video for this uh, Smitty Build air compressor. As you just saw, it took 80 seconds to do 15 PSI um, for a $265 compressor. This is the bigger of the two. This is the 2781 model. Um, there is one that's smaller. I don't quite recall the exact size, but I think it's about half uh, the CFM output. Yeah, it works great. We're super happy with it. The pros, as you just saw, and how easy it was to air up the tires, far outweigh the cons being a cheap, you know, container that it comes in, uh, the size, and then I guess the, the, the heat that it can create. Um, but after one tire, it's like 11, 12 degrees Celsius outside. Uh, it's not warm at all. You could lick it if you wanted to and it'd be totally fine. Don't recommend doing that, guys. For one last time, shameless plug. Um, if you're interested in the apparel that Devin's been making for FTR Outdoors, uh, hit us up in the comments. Uh, we'd be happy to respond and see what we can do. Um, nothing quite set in stone yet, but as you uh, have noticed, we've been wearing FTR hats, we've been wearing FTR t-shirts, sweaters, and that kind of stuff in uh, our videos, uh, basically for the last four or five months. And we're all just working on stuff. So if you have recommendations for things that we should do, or if maybe you'd be interested in buying apparel, um, hit us up, let us know, and then we can kind of plan for the future. But as of now, you know, there's nothing set in stone, but you're gonna see us rocking the, the sweet stuff that we've got on the go over the next little while, um, as well as our, uh, our Brave Star Salvage uh, outerwear, heritage outerwear. We love our raw denim. We love our American-made clothing. Um, we like supporting local businesses. So again, if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, um, sweaters like this, denim jackets, Sherpa, stuff like that, uh, go check out Brave Star Salvage um, and do those guys a favor because they're super sick. Um, so yeah, if you have any other comments, questions, or concerns about the air compressor, if there's anything you'd like to add for like the process of using it, um, or your personal experiences, comment on the video and we'll be sure to read that and respond. We take pride in responding. And as always, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, hit the bell, share these videos with your friends. Um, you know, we love it when people enjoy this stuff and actually uh, take use or value out of the videos that we do. Um, yeah, so we're gonna end it at that. Uh, stay tuned for more videos to come. We've got Get Outdoors Chapter Four coming out uh, probably within the next couple of weeks. That's a big project, lots of work goes into it. Um, Steven is uh, one of the guys in the video. He's out collecting wood somewhere. Check that fire out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And as you can see, we don't always sleep in the Tacoma. Overlanding isn't always about the expensive gear you have. Sometimes you can go buy a tent like that from Canadian Tire, um, sling a tarp up and have fun. So that's always the message to you guys. That's kind of the message with the Smitty Belt. I could have easily gone and bought the twin air compressor from ARB. Um, and it would have done the same thing that this just did. It might have just been a little bit cooler. Now, I still think this is pretty cool. It's doing the job that I want it to do. If I need to air down, I can air down and reliably air up. If I get a flat tire or if my spare is pooch and I need to patch this thing, I can patch it and air up. If Steven needs air, I can air him up. Um, that's the whole purpose of the air compressor and that's the reason why we have it in our recovery kit because you never know when you might need it beyond the overland purpose and for the safety purpose of things. So yeah guys, we're gonna uh, retire to this humongous fire. We're gonna get some hot dogs going because we're keeping it simple tonight. Um, yeah, so uh, until next time, uh, we're gonna be working hard. Devin and I got lots of things on the go. Uh, the crew has always got things on the go. So stay tuned guys, we appreciate you. Um, get outdoors. Yeah, 80 seconds and we're on 15 PSI. It went farther than I thought it would. Got a rip roaring fire going now. Yeah, that's a huge fire. That's a reaper. Well.